what's up, everybody? Welcome in. It's the PHNX Cardinals podcast, your premier Arizona Cardinal podcast. Like and subscribe. Leave us a five star wherever you get your programming. I'm Johnny Venerable. He is Bo Brock live at the PHNX headquarters in downtown Phoenix. We are less than what 36 hours removed from the Arizona Cardinals home loss to the Cincinnati Bengals, Bo Brock. And if that wasn't already painful enough, this Redbird team, the casualties keep coming on the injured reserve. Injuries left and right. James Conner, Jalen Thompson. You were with Jonathan Gannon today. And let's just say the clip that you put out, not super optimistic, it looks like, is JG. Right. I mean, he said that James Conner and Jalen Thompson were both being evaluated, but one position they added to today by claiming Tony Jones Jr. from the New Orleans Saints, the running back, right? Yeah. James Conner, he didn't see action after that big 35-yard run in the first half. He exited, went to the locker room, came back but then never returned once the teams went to the locker room for halftime. And uh, look, I mean, it's it's not a great sign, you know, and it's no. not like to point at James Conner and say he's oft injured. It's just, you know, it's the brutal reality of the NFL. Jonathan Gannon said in that clip, look, I'm not trying to be coy with you. There continues to just, it's just part of the routine. It's just, they're going to, they're being evaluated. They're getting a medical opinions and, and we'll see. And hopefully, you know, it's, it's a relatively minimal scare for the Arizona Cardinals, but it, it really feels like, uh oh, they're uh, starting to kind of bear down the hatches a little bit and prepare for the worst. The safety position already took a shot without yeah. Buda Baker and now Jalen Thompson, who, like James Conner and Jalen Thompson, are two of the top 10 players on the Arizona Cardinals, on top of already having no Kyler Murray, no Buda Baker. The Jalen Thompson thing, like you've got Kayvon Wallace, who had an interception yesterday. Maybe you can piecemeal it together. That's that's Gannon's specialty in the second year. I want to focus on James Conner for a second. And not to pile on and be a dick at the top of this podcast, <laughs> but like we told you so. This team spent all summer and in the draft season not addressing RB2 and talking about how much they wanted to run the football. And I'm saying all this, Bo, not knowing like James Conner may play this weekend against the LA Rams. I guess that's possible. Mm -hmm. But for everybody now to sit back and say, well, what happens to the run game? That's a fair question. This guy was an absolute stud. He's making eight figures. He's one of the top five, I think, in the NFL in yards per carry. He had 7.7 .7 yards per carry yesterday. Mm -hmm. But again, I love James. He misses time every year. Like, that's that's not debatable. That's a fact. And and for you to, to, to lean on him this year and not think that was going to happen at some point, especially with no Kyler Murray to supplement a quarterback, I think it was naive to say, like, we're going to be fine at the running back position this year. Like, they signed Marlon Mack. It was unfortunate. We were at training camp when he blew out his Achilles. But like, you know, BJ Ojolari is not playing very much right now. That we talked about it in studio yesterday. Like that could have been supplemented with a back. You could have taken a running back at some point in the draft. I like a, a De Mercado, but like again, I, I think you're you're reaching if you're going to say, well, he's going to be our guy, or wow. Tony Jones from New Orleans is going to be our guy. I I'm very curious what the plan is at running back because they felt very cat super casual addressing that need in the off season to the point where it's like, well, we got to figure it out. Do you? It'll be anxious to see, man. I mean, you had your parachute on, you just jumping out of an airplane with that one. Just saying, maybe we could have taken a back at 41 well, hey, overall. Been about this was a premium position, a pass rusher. And I know, look, it doesn't look great right now. I mean, Devon Achain would look good in any, any Jersey at this point at the NFL level. He, he certainly was uh, available for a lot of teams, right? Wasn't he like RB six in the yeah. draft? Uh, so look, I, I'm not going to looking at James Conner when he, he averages about just over 14 games per, per season in his NFL career, you know, it is, it was concerning, but at the same time, when, when you're gutting a roster, when you're trying to get it down to the studs and you're trying to prepare it for a pivotal off season where you're going to be armed with as much cap space as possible and you're not investing, you know, guaranteed dollars. And I'm not saying a running back would cost you that, but as far as, just what how people viewed the Arizona Cardinals organization. Like, how were they going to get into negotiations with a running back and woo them here when the expectations for the team is low? You've got a bell cow back already in James Conner. It's just, it's tough. Like to be able to get a cream hunt through the doors, it's it's just not it's 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 easier said than done. Um, you know, I, I agree with Dylan Richards. It, there, here's here's the things that that were, I guess make you feel a little bit more optimistic about James Conner. Maybe it was like a knee bruise. I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about this. Mere, just just pure speculation. But, 
you know, if there was structural damage, I don't think, A, he's jogging off the field like I saw him do with my own eyes. He, he ran to the locker room right below me for, in the press box. And then he's back out there at one point before the end of the first half with his helmet on. Um, so, it, and, but then they decide maybe proceeding with caution that they just didn't want to, maybe it's just a, a bruise or it, what, what JG says, he, he thinks it got stuck in the turf there and he, and he tweaked the knee. It, it's it's going to be fascinating to see what shows up, you know, officially come Wednesday or what's reported between now and then. But yeah, I, I mean, I would be, I would be optimistic that it's not like something season engine ending for a guy yeah. like Connor. I agree with that, but I think, preparing yourself for a multi-week absence is probably appropriate. And yeah, I mean, again, he bruises like two to four weeks. Right. And so yeah. you can't have it. Your cake and eat it too, where you're like, well, backs are interchangeable. Just go get another back. If they're interchangeable, you're not paying James mm-hmm. Conner eight figures this year. You're not paying him $10 million to be I on mean, the that roster. Was a ki- that was kind. That was yeah, a- but they chose to keep him around. They but showed a lot of guaranteed dollars. It benefited the more to keep James Conner than to get rid they of him. They showed you keeping him in house that they wanted to put a pri- priority and emphasis on running the football. They could have, they could have made, I think a little bit of money if they opted to cut him, but great human being, great leader in the rock r- locker room and, and a great player. But all we heard was the emphasis this team was going to do running the football. They used multiple top 30 visits during draft season on running backs. The board didn't fall to, to, to their liking. Clearly they didn't take it back at all. And so now like, I, I get it. Like, had this is this Bruce Arians team with Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald? Like, you can supplement a back. You can mm-hmm. plug and play some guys. Kerwin Williams, once upon a time. This offense right now with a quarterback <laughs> that had that had a tough time on Sunday. Yeah. Right. With no Kyler Murray. Right. With an offense, the identity is running the football. I mean, they've ru- they rush for what over 100 yards in every single game, over 140 yards, and I think four out of the five. Like. Most of that has been from James Conner outside of the occasional, you know, end around around Al Moore. So I, I th- and again, like I, I will not be too critical until we turn around against LA or Seattle and the run game disappears. Then it, then it becomes blame game, blame game of if this is your identity of what you want to do offensively, having a contingency plan for a back that's capable, that can carry the workload that that needed to be done. So I, your guess I, I mean, I agree with Austin though. here. I mean, Dermot Cotto played well. He did play very well in the absence yeah. of James Conner, but here, here's where there is a difference. There was a distinct difference, it's for, especially when you're in a, in a very uh, serious situation with the, the offense backed up after a great fourth uh, and goal stand, and the offense gets put onto the field with the lead at the end of the first half, and all they have to do is, is avoid a cat- catastrophe, and they couldn't because they didn't feel comfortable. They, they tried the, the Philly special, right, or the Philly tush-push, to get a little room, they didn't. Then they didn't run the ball. Like the next play, they didn't run. The, they, they run the ball there with James Conner if they have. Right, they absolutely do. They absolutely do. But now you look at their options, and it's not completely bare. The cupboard is not right. You you at least have options right now by by picking up Tony Jones Jr., a guy who scored twice in a Monday Night Football game. Right this season, week two, uh, he, he's shown the ability to to at least carry the load somewhat in, in a stacked. You know. Saints running back room. He was just the odd guy out with Kendry Miller and Amar and uh, and and Kamara coming back, and, and probably Jamal Williams. You know, you get a guy like Tony Jones Jr. You've got a guy in Damian Williams who's had success that they signed to a practice squad, and then we'll see where Keontae Ingram is and Dermacato. It's not. It's not like hey, we're SOL right now. I mean, what were you going to be able to find this off season that, that's better than that? What has Kareem Hunt even done this season? No, I get that, but again, like having a capable back that's had starting experience, like I guess maybe Tony Jones is that. But Di Mercado, to me, like I people are are kind of speaking my language in the chat, age in 47, like he's not my favorite player. Like I, I think he's got some hesitation at the line of scrimmage. He, maybe they work through that. He's the starter now or the default what, starter. What about his, the, the, I mean, when they cut into that 24-20, he got I mean, better. He looked, he looked great. Carries. Right. And some I guys mean, need he rhythm was carries. The first, so, I mean, he picks up, he goes, what, 9, 8, 11, as far as getting his way to the end zone. He yeah. gets, and, and on that nine yard first down run, there was patience. He let his, he, he let the blocks develop and then he found the rush lane and hit it. And then the very next play, he gets another chunk well, yard, and then he gets the eleven yard explosive runs. to the end zone. Those Shots, are the best explosive he's had, that he's had all year. Like he's been average to below average up until that point. But again, you know what that was? Original. We say shoom, shoom, shoom. Shots, 
explosives. Demacarda. Flukes, maybe. <laughs> uh, Bengals uh, run defense, not very good. They can't stop the run. Uh, I want him to do well. I, I'm all for playing young players. But again, like the uh, it leaves a lot to be desired uh, with, a, with a group of Tony Jones, Keontae Ingram's banged up, Corey Clement barely play. That shows you the confidence level in him. And then a rookie undrafted free agent that up until that drive, he's doing too much of this, doing too much of the rumba at the line of scrimmage, too much dancing. Right. He wasn't hitting the hole. There were holes to be hit and he missed it. They even said it on the broadcast. So I, yeah, he, he does have hesitation, Girth. Maybe they coach that out of him now that he's the guy. Maybe they say this week, like, you're starting. You got to be able to hit that hole hard. Otherwise, you're going to get swallowed up by Aaron Donald and company. I hope that he emerges. But again, uh, I'm not going to play. I told you so. You had to know that James Conner was going to miss time this year, especially in a run heavy offense. You are naive if you didn't think that. If you're the Cardinals, not the fan base, but if you're the Cardinals and said, we're good, James is making 10 million, he's going to make it 17 weeks, or like you got to have a stable game, run game with Joshua Dobbs. And then Kyler Murray in this offense working through the Kings is going to need a stable run game. So this is a true test for Drew Petsing. I'm guilty of this. We're all guilty of this, Bo. Anointing him. He's got articles coming out, future head coach, the next Ben Johnson. Okay, can you supplement this run game now? consistently without James Conner. Can you find a way to produce yards on the ground? I think they will do an okay job because the offensive line, even with the pass rush struggles of yesterday, their identity is running the football. And that's what we saw with Dean Mercado when he started to hit the hole. I mean, he wasn't being touched until like four or five yards down the line of scrimmage. So that, that's encouraging. So I'm hopeful, but at the same time, I mean, like, again, J James Conner has been a tremendous signing for the Cardinals. He doesn't play full season. We know that. Yeah, and look, the previous regime signed him to that lucrative three-year deal, which is probably going to be a two-year deal, too, and and done after this season, unless you know Connor wants to go back to the negotiation table and, and restructure something that works out to keep him here in the desert. But you know, I, I we've all pretty much predicted that it, this offseason, with with the cap space they've got, the draft picks that they have, I, I really think that this team wants to draft and develop a running back. And that's the way they go. They go with the a youth movement at the position. Um, but when you look at it now, it's like, and you look at, the, I mean, who was available this offseason? Who was out there to get? Probably, I mean, I, I don't think they were far off. I mean, they they were active. They they added a Marlon Mack. Terrence is Achilles in camp. And then you've, you've got this situation going on. And, and they had a guy already on the practice squad last week. They, they weren't just completely um, neglecting the position. I would say if you go back to a lot of our shows from February through April, we were teasing the idea of adding a, a legitimate compliment to James Conner, especially knowing what kind of offense they want to run, and shocked that they didn't add a back in the draft. If you go back to look some of our drafts, roster, though, look at this Ross. It's it's just in, it was in such horrible shape, and Monty Osfort had That's to true. just completely tear everything down. So where do you start? And you can't well, start with a running back. You just can't. Like you no, can't. No, but I'm not use, saying first round. Right. But, oh, I, I mean, know. Like, I know. You can't use. And you can't use second round. And you can't use either your two third round picks. I mean, the earliest we're looking at was fourth round. Look at how the draft played out. I mean, you had Seattle reaching for Charbonnet. Probably not a reach at this point, but they take Charbonnet early in the second round. You had two backs go within the first top fifteen picks. I mean, as far as uh, a misread for for most of the league was how early backs were going to go. I just don't think that the opportunity presented itself for Monty Austin for it, for it to, to draft. A, well, clearly, they, this didn't, year. they didn't value any of the backs enough. And now it'll be a true to, if they can get through this two to four week, whatever that is without James Conner and not fall on their face offensively, because again, they have been incredibly consumable and watchable offensively in large part because of James Conner, right? If that goes away, and Josh Dobbs regresses, the offensive line regresses without James Conner and his leadership and his ability to break tackles. He's one of the top, uh, you know, running through tackle backs, whatever you want to call it. After, in contact. The this year. Yeah. After contact, he's been sensational. Keeping drives going. The Cardinal offense, which already has like their entire team, a very small margin for error. You remove that for any length of time. Like, does your offense become what people thought it would be, what the defense is turning into now. We're going to talk about that. That's the biggest thing. I mean, this is this is where Drew Petzing has to show you that he's a big boy offensive coordinator. Can you manufacture the Rondell more plays? 
Can you get Keontae Ingram back on track after this injury? Because Ingram was supposed to be the guy, and he has been removed from the equation because of injury. And we thought, you know, Bon Voyage for his career with the Arizona Cardinals, because he's been given multiple opportunities, hasn't seized the job. Does this breed new life? Is If Keontae Ingram's like back at practice this week, is he starting on Sunday? That'll be very fascinating to watch because he does fit what they want from that position. Dermacato, very much a change of pace player that you want no part given over 10, 15 touches to. Whereas Keontae Ingram, like perfect timing for him to come back healthy and, and ready to go. Fresh legs, so to speak. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Dermacato probably they're going to keep him in his the role that he's played most of the season, third down back, yeah. passing situation back. And and they'll look for somebody to carry the load on on first and second down, whether it's Damian Williams, whether it's Tony Jones Jr. Or yeah, you hope that Keontae Ingram is somebody that you know, seizes the opportunity, but I feel like it's been there for him to grab and we just haven't been shown what we want to see yet from the former Texas uh, all, all world high school running back that was heavily recruited, went to Texas and then went on to USC for a change of scenery and sure he gets drafted in the sixth round. But, you know, we had Damian Anderson as a co-host for all last season who, who worked out a guy like uh, Keontae Ingram, and it was a bit bullish on on his ability to to go from a, a late round pick to a guy that can play at the NFL level, but still need to see it. Like, here's your right. opportunity. Get your neck right. You know, I, I don't. I mean, it seems like he's been close for back to back weeks, but this is your chance. You you want to be able to you know create and pave a, a NFL career out for yourself. Here it is right now. I mean, to to get opportunities beyond Arizona. Uh, that that's what I think Ingram's going to have to do. And, and here it is in the next, you know, one to two weeks if, if Connor misses time. So let's transfer from the offense to the defense. Now the offense is, you know, Will Hernandez gutted it out. The offense itself, we're waiting on Kyler Murray. We're going to talk about that. The defense to me though, I mean, you lose Jalen Thompson. I mean, w- what do you have left in that secondary? We've got a super chat from our guy, fan of the program, little Dreezy $13.99. Do we trade for Patrick Sertain or CB1 this this free agency? And of course, like this comes out of our guy James Polner from DMVR, does a great job, you know, for the NFL Network, helps them with their coverage. Basically, saying the Broncos under Sean Payton and Vance Joseph, they're about to blow it up, right? Yeah. So maybe Patrick Sertain is available. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> Cardinals. It's it's a tough time for them. It's not Denver tough because of their expectations, their bloated expectations. But Cardinals defense is, has not been good. I got some statistics for everybody, you know. Save for the Washington game, which was pretty solid, and then the Dallas game. Mm -hmm. This season as a whole, the Cardinals are allowing 27.2 points per game. That's six last in the NFL. They've allowed the fifth most passing yards. They've allowed the six most total yards in the NFL. Opposing quarterback ratings through five games, it's an even 100 ball, Brock. And that's including Dak Prescott and Sam Howell having about a 77, 78 Mm -hmm. rating. So in their losses to the Giants, Brock Purdy and the Niners, and then yesterday, Joe Burrow. It's We're talking like 115, 120. This defense is struggling big time. And like, I will put the James Conner thing on lack of, you know, uh, not availability, but just preparation. Defensively, I don't know what they're supposed to do. You lose all these star players. Their defensive line's a mess. The pass rush is non-existent. Let me ask you a question. Given mm-hmm. Jay, uh, Jalen Thompson's injury, is this defense and their deficiencies like fixable here in the short term, or are they just going to have to ride this out? They're going to have to ride it out for sure. But there, there is, you know, some reinforcements coming in, in shortly before they face Puka Nakua and, and Cooper cup, who didn't miss a beat returning from his hamstring injury and, and a stint on the IR. And then of course we've got uh, Matthew Stafford having a career resurgence. You know, I think that, you know, I talked to Jonathan Gannon. He joked that I answered my own question when I asked, are you going to ramp Garrett Williams up, to, you know, this week? He says, yeah, we're going to ramp him up. We're going to ramp up Dennis Daly. So I got to imagine that this kind of ex- expedites as far as these injured players returning their timeline a little bit. I think that they, they're probably going to want to try to find a way to get their talented third rounder Garrett Williams up to speed come this week because of injuries to, to Jalen Thompson, who was playing really well yesterday. Like Jalen right. Thompson was having one of his better games of the season. It was unfortunate they had to bow out to an injury, and, and they're still evaluating him as well. But, you know, Sasha Ray really struggled yesterday. I think Kayvon Wallace had a, a good game. So you've got the good and the bad. Um, it, it's just, you know, 
Gannon, he's put a lot of the emphasis on the struggles yesterday, and I don't know if this is just him being uh, trying to take accountability, but he put it on himself. He said that the coaching staff really did a disservice to their players yesterday as far as where they put them on the field and, and that there was too many opportunities, obviously, for Jamar Chase that they could have taken away just schematically as coaches. Um, and, and that's fine. That's being a good leader. I don't know if it's hyperbole or, or how much you know we should buy stock into it, but because we just want to see, we've seen Marco Wilson struggle. We've seen, you know, the entire secondary at points struggle. So to say, hey, it's just to put the same guys out there and expect different results. What that's the definition of insanity. But it's not that they don't have talent coming at some point. It's just it can't get here soon enough. What's he supposed to say too? Like Austin, this is a true GM head coaching relationship. Austin Ford picks the players. The Cardinals knew what they were getting into with this roster in 2023. I mean, he can't go up to that press conference every week and be like, yeah, guys, see what we're working with, like practice squad <laughs> level players. Hey, I lost my bre- best two players defensively, my two safeties. Yeah, we're fucked yeah. now. Like, <laughs> he, he'll never say that. But like we, as viewers and supporters of this team and absorb this content daily, we know that the defensive personnel is bottom tier in the NFL. Like, that's a fact. That can't be disputed. Like, go to a casual yeah, There's NFL no Patrick fan. Sertain. There's no Zach right. Allen. Right. They, they spent big money on Zach Allen, Denver. and they got, Like, the Cardinals did not go out and, and fortify this roster with free agent Band-Aids. And the premium picks they used in the draft, well, they used their first round pick on a right tackle who's kicking ass right now. They, they took a flyer on a hurt player. He's just coming back from injury in Garrett Williams. And then... B.J. O'Jolari was hurt that we didn't know about. So he's coming back slowly. So, like, it's a process, man. Like, the, the, the expectations for this defense were low to begin with. They overachieved. For two out of the first three games, they overachieved. They they shut out the Giants in the first half. They made Dak Prescott look terrible. They looked pretty good against Sam Howell, defensive touchdown week one. Since then, it's like the, the avalanche, the water dam has broken. And it looks like a defense that's missing a lot of their key players that was already undermanned to begin with this season. So I I am critical of the play calling yesterday offensively. I did not like the, the fourth and short that they called. I didn't like the usage of some of the run game toward the end of the game. And I thought, you know, Joshua Dobbs probably could have been better. Defensively, like, I don't even know what you say. Like, I saw people be critical and say, like, you should have doubled, you know, Jamar, Jamar Chase. They were trying to double him with practice squad level corners and defensive backs, his last touchdown, he's out running two guys in the end zone. That's called a double team. What do you want him? What do you want the Cardinals to do? They don't have Jalen Thompson or Buda Baker. Marco Wilson has regressed significantly and they're starting a six round rookie corner and Antonio Hamilton. Like that's about the end result. And we said on the post game show, if Jamar chase is a top three receiver in the NFL, like he should do that to your secondary. That doesn't have great players right now. Yeah. It's just a fact. It's a good question from Jessica. Do we think Monty regrets some of his choices? Obviously not being aggressive in free agency. And, and you know, you can put all that behind, you know, uh, a teardown and a, and a rebuilding of a roster, certainly, right? I mean, he invests two of his his draft picks in uh, secondary posi- uh, players, you know, a cornerback injured, Garrett Williams. Uh, and in the sixth round, they get Keetrell Clark. And, and those are two potential future starters for this team. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, you just... You take those picks, obviously, for for with your eye towards the future, right? But what do you do in the interim? And you look at the roster, and Marco Wilson's on the roster at the time. They had Christian Matthew, and I don't think they knew, you know, what he could or what he couldn't do. I'm sure, they had a hunch. They had Antonio Hamilton that they brought back on a free agent deal this this off season, and then they sh- signed Rashad Fenton, who they lose on IR for the entire season this training camp. So you know, they tried to get NFL caliber guys, obviously not huge marquee names, but you know, I think that 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 was the play, and, and that's a roll of the dice that you take. But you obviously you're emphasizing the future. You're you're emphasizing. I see, I see Chase in the, in the chat saying, "Hey, they're still collecting capital, right? They're still collecting future assets, and that and that that's the most important thing, here, right? I I know that these these guys want to win football games. Jonathan Gannon, the players in that locker room, they want to win football games. I'm sure Monty Austin for wants to win football games, but the most important thing is getting this roster in place and getting enough assets and salary cap to where you can be aggressive this next off season and retooling your roster with the idea that you're going to be consistently successful. And just set of just, you know, try to compete your best in 2023. We've seen how that goes sometimes when your roster is not in good enough shape. It, it, it just, it crushes your chance to, to be consistently successful. 
Uh, $4.99 chat from our guy, Aris. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Realistically, out of the games we have left, how many wins do you see? How many wins are there? I think, again, a lot go of back is, up. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's a lot of it is predicated on can Josh Dobbs play better than he did yesterday? I think yes. And then also Bull Brock, like when do they get some of these these hurt players back? Like I, mm -hmm. I still think there's a stretch, you know, between, you know, starting this weekend, but especially between weeks nine through 13, where there, there's some ga very winnable games in there. Uh, Atlanta, Houston, I think they beat LA once. I think they beat Seattle once, frankly. You know, the, the the Ravens have shown to be normal or mortal. I should say the Bears are still on here. I, I would still be surprised, Bo. And I get it. They're one and four if they don't get to five or six wins. I, I still think that with, with this coaching staff and with these reinforcements eventually on the way, mm -hmm. I think they remember how bad the Cardinals were last year and they should have slept walked to five or six wins with backups, but they blew games late in the season. Like, the dynamic of the NFL changes week to week, month to month. Like the Niners are playing right right now. They they may be too hot at some point and flame out at the end of the year. They may playing your best ball from weeks one to 17. That's really not sustainable. So I I will still say six wins is achievable for this team, Bo. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at, you know, the next two games between LA and Seattle, and the most winnable would be against the two and three Rams. And Seattle's would, would have to have a letdown at home in week seven. But then you look at uh, the, the kind of the teeth of the the next stretch here, like between week nine and week twelve, where Falcons are a beatable team, the Texans are a beatable team. You know, those are those are games that the Cardinals have a chance of winning, but they also have a chance. I mean, there, there's no slam dunk on this schedule. Uh, you, you know, you're going to need some help from the Rams. They're going to have to make mistakes. Their offense can't go stagnant like it did at the end of yesterday's game. Uh, and just like the Cardinals, their margin for error is zero. They make mistakes. Yep. Their offense goes quiet. De their deficiencies on defense outside of Aaron Donald uh, are tough to overcome. Uh, it, it, but it also is not a slam dunk. Like we saw this past weekend, a team that where there was blood in the water didn't necessarily mean that, hey, Cardinals are going there and going to get a walk out of there with the dub. I mean, yep. they're not a pushover. But at the same time, like a lot has to go right. They have to play a near perfect game with where their roster is right now. Alex, 499 Super Chat. Am I overreacting to the 1018 that Kyler Murray put on his Instagram story earlier? Could that be a hint? So I, I, I screen sent it, <laughs> shot of that and sent that to Bo earlier today. Turns out his new shoe is dropping next yeah. Wednesday, Bo Brock. So uh, not a return to the practice field. Although those two things could coincide. That's absolutely a possibility, Alex. Uh, crossing our fingers for that. But as of right now, just, just dropping his shoe next week. Uh, nothing more to it, Bo. I mean, he's been handing them out to all of his buddies, and, and he, he's been posting them on Instagram. I asked Hollywood Brown, like, did you get co cop a pair of those shoes? He's like, oh, I got to be number one. Like, there's no question about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe October 18th is is the date that the shoe drops. Uh, I hope he's on the practice field before then, though. That's true. DD 499 super chat wins don't mean much this year. The Cardinals are doing exactly what we want overachieving but losing games 2024 draft positions is more important and listen like a large segment of the fan base feels that way dd i'm not going to tell you you're wrong or right for that opinion i think again like it's it's hard on sundays this year to watch this team lose and struggle like they have been yeah but then you fast forward to april and that's the beauty of the nfl there's no lottery system like you get paid tenfold for your losses during the season in the form of a premium draft pick i think there's there's a good possibility this team wins a few more games this year, gives us a lot to cheer about on Sundays, and still ends up with a couple premium draft picks next April. And this team, especially, you have to feel encouraged. We're going to talk about this later. Like the play of these rookies outside of the top couple of rounds, like Dante Stills and company, it's, it's incredible. So mm -hmm. just because we fall in love, and I'm guilty of this with a Marvin Harrison Jr., like oh, whether you're picking six I, or nine or 12 it. or 15, like, if you're if you're doing your job as an NFL yeah. scout and a general manager, you're going to get a good player, a really good player in a loaded draft. Well, he's easy to scout. Yes, he's easy to love, right? But even I Steve mean, Time. Could here's the thing about, and we've heard this from Gannon, and we've heard this from other people as far as Monty Osford. He's a sicko. I mean, he's watching tape all the time. Mm -hmm. Guarantee. I mean, he's going to be the most prepared NFL GM for next next offseason draft, and and that's I'm pumped about that. But man, I, I mean. I, Jody Ayler made this point today, and you know I want to kind of co-opt it. It's as far as it feels good to be upset with 
maybe some of the decision making from JG and having these raised ex expectations for Joshua Dobbs because they weren't there before. Like this was a team that people were talking about 0 and 17. They're going to be one and two in the draft. Joshua Dobbs was just pointing to an even more egregious tank job. But here we are. We're upset with their play on Sunday. They let the game get away. They made the wrong decisions on fourth and one. They did all this shit that cost them the game. But, you know, it's, it's like uh, rather – uh, to have loved than to not love and, and lost and not to have loved at all, right? I mean, just you, to to be burned like that, it makes you feel alive as a sports fan. It know? does. Well, they're not rolling <laughs> over and dying. They moved up power rankings today. If you guys yeah. are still taking us, like I saw them like twenty fifth in power in a power ranking today from like a legitimate publication. And they, they, they get, that's got to be a testament. I didn't even get to the, like, on Instagram, they weren't even on the slide. Like, they were, like, I think one after. Yeah, that's like, the one I saw. <laughs> like, it's just, and and again, that all the credit, and it, it got screwed up now that they're not two and three, but, like, I was going to go on a big rant. Had they won, like, Jonathan Gannon should get Coach of the Year votes. Like, that's not going to happen now, barring something unforeseen. But, like, this is unequivocally dating back to, I would say, early 2000s Cardinal football the worst personnel defensively I have ever seen this franchise towed out. I texted you yesterday, and respectfully, Zayvon Collins is going to have the quietest, like, eight, nine-sack season of any defensive lineman I, I could remember. He had that sack yesterday, and then he's just kind of flailing around out there, and I'm just like, do they love there any you. of these? Do they love any of these guys? Nice. Like, Giddy up. <laughs> Jalen Thompson, Buda Baker leave. And Kazir White can only do so much. It's it's tough right now yeah. in that in that defensive street streets. Makes me think about Bo. Remember the year the Gannon took over as the DC in Philadelphia, and they started two and five. And I know we've talked about this before, but he went to Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni, and he's like, "I will take all the shots," meaning like physically from the fans, like people come af have them come after the defense, supplement and go offense, and they went offensive heavy Devonte smith they went offensive crazy to set jalen hurts up for success and if you go back and you look at those first seven games for the eagles a couple years ago they were terrible they were terrible defensively right then they found their footing they had another off season they supplemented they signed hassan reddick and then they were historically great and james year. bradbury you know and I mean, james bradbury yeah. right and they got darius slay they made some moves to fortify the defense now, the Cardinals are starting with a much further bare cupboard than what the Eagles yeah. had. But, like, you you cannot sit there as a Cardinal fan and think we are not getting the most out of our talent defensively. I, I Listen, when they got a stop yesterday, I'm, like, applaud, standing up at the studio and applauding them. Because when Jalen Thompson left that game, I'm like, who are these players? Who are, who are these guys <laughs> trying to cover Jamar Chase? And, again, like, I, the offense would need to go score for score at this rate to stop anybody or to, to win games right now. I commend Gannon for what we've seen defensively through five games, but are we are we starting to see cracks in the foundation of just like, this is who you got to work with? Yeah, I mean, you. I, I wish that, you know, there was a little bit more uh, urgency maybe to get more exotic, just throw the whole kitchen sink at them defensively, right? Yeah. But they're just trying, they're trying to keep it, close right and and if if they get a stop if they get if they force a turnover like Kayvon wallace did you know you just see that it puts them right back in position they're within striking distance they, they could have taken a lead in that game they could have pulled within one um it, it it really is i mean they are just scratching and clawing every single yard every single yard they don't give up uh, or you know every resetting of the downs i mean they're just back there just grinding every single way they, they possibly can. And you have to appreciate it. Kayvon Wallace is like one of the best defensive players that they have right now. And he was picked up like. Couldn't get on ago. the field. Couldn't get on the field in Philly. And Philly, Philly, they cut him. And, and I, I think if you ask Gannon today, you'd be like, yeah, he's one of our most valuable players now. Defensively. Yeah. And it's like, okay, Jordan P. I, I swore I saw Johnny out there guarding Chase at some point. It felt like that. Uh, but again, like I, I just don't have a lot of patience for people that are like, the scheme's terrible. Look, they should have been doubling Jamar Chase. Guys, rewatch the game if you can stomach it. Watch yeah. the all 22. Look at the players that they're trying to throw at him. This is this is times are tough on the defensive side. You lose your best two players defensively, and they both happen to play safety. You're going to give up big plays to Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Uh, if you want to make big big plays with your bank account, you're going to get hooked up with our friends at DraftKings. How about this? 
the NFL season is underway and going strong, as is our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, hooking you all up, new customers with an even stronger offer, right? I think the Packers are going to get work tonight. Take a five spot with our friends at DraftKings. Use that bonus code PHNX, $200 in bonus bets instantly. Okay, DraftKings, they're not stopping there. All customers can take advantage of this sweetener offer every game this October. How about that? It's a call to action. Get in on the game with our friends at DraftKings. I'm going to put it out there right now. Vegas Moneyline Plus, an anytime touchdown. How about this? scrambling Jimmy Garoppolo anytime touchdown. You like it? Packers are known to give up big yardage to opposing quarterbacks. Get in on the game tonight. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use that bonus code PHNX. New customers can score $200 instantly in those bonus bets. Right now, it's the official uh, sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. And again, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I'm over 60% <laughs> for my game day predictions on our pregame show. I called the anytime touchdown to Zach Gertz yesterday plus 240. Get in on the action. Check them out. www.1800gambler.net. If you got a gambling problem in the meantime, check out the show notes for full details. See the sports book at draftkingsportsbook.com. Terms and conditions apply. Gamble responsibly, Bo. I feel like you're McConaughey and two for the money. Like I'm, I hit over 60% on all my NFL. You're just, you're a sweet talking, smooth, That's a professional dude. Better. That's Admit absolutely it. true. You look cool in shades as well. You're shady rays, just like McConaughey. All right, all right. Use that PHNX code for 50% off two or more pairs of premium polarized shades from our friends over at Shady Rays. They're durable. They are well built, but they're extremely cool, clear optics for your outdoor adventures. Do not compromise your vision with the sun beating down on you here in the desert. Shady Rays has an insane, one of the most, probably the most insane protection for all their eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses you buy from Shady Rays, it's backed by a lost and broken replacement plan where if you break your pair, if you lose your pair, they will replace them, no questions asked, long after your purchase or shortly after you make your purchase. If you don't make it out of the store, they'll replace them for you. If you drop them like a knucklehead and you, and you step on them, they're going to replace them for you. Check out their store up in Kierlin Commons in North Scottsdale. You just tell them the promo code PHNX. They will honor that. But you can also go online, ShadyRays.com, from the comfort of your home, wherever you may be doing your purchasing of your sunglasses, maybe on the on the porcelain throne. I don't know. I don't know where you do shopping. Just use that promo code PHNX. It works anywhere with Shady Rays. Find out why 250,000 people have rated them five stars. ShadyRays.com. Get two or more. Use that promo code PHNX. NX. I love the porcelain throne. Uh, yeah. Athletes first were with our guy, Shane Diefenbach, put out a, a, a tremendous vlog. You have to go look at it on their Instagram, interviewing Packer wives um, yeah. and basically saying, like, what's their biggest flaw? Devondre Campbell, I guess, sits on the toilet a lot. And I'm like, that's my spirit animal. Devondre Campbell, ex-Cardinal, current Packer linebacker, is on the porcelain throne all the time. His wife called him out on it. <laughs> and I'm like, I, that's great stuff. That's the content I'm looking for from my guy, Shane Diefenbach. All right, here's the content that you're looking for from PHNX Cardinals. It's trending up, trending down, but to the request of my very needy co-host, to be uh, positive, we are going to start with trending down this week, Bill Brock. Who's trending down for you so you can be not nice and then be nice? Yeah, I mean, this is when we have our big meeting with our GM tomorrow, Saul Bookman, I'm going to ask for the bad news first because you always want bad news first <laughs> and then good news last. Let's end on a high note. Uh, trending down, I, I mean... Marco Wilson. It's been a tough 2023 season for the former fourth round pick who is notorious for throwing a shoe in a huge SEC showdown between Florida and LSU, but it's it's been worse. At least maybe just if he'd thrown a shoe at Jamar Chase yesterday, it might have been better coverage than what he offered uh during the game. Oh, man. It was it was just rough. He was part of the uh the secondary that gave up 192 yards to Chase, three touchdowns. All three of Joe Burrow's passing touchdowns went to Chase when, you know, there wasn't much else on the field outside of him. Sure, there was Tyler Boyd, but he's you know not playing at that huge level that he was a couple seasons ago. Marco Wilson has had a tough 2023 campaign, and it's it continues to trend down, unfortunately, instead of trend up. And then yesterday, you pointed this out, and you know when you looked at the offensive line, not a bad day at the office overall. You only surrendered three sacks, but two and a half of those to Trey Hendrickson. He's coming off. He plays that right defensive end for the Bengals, and you know guarding the right defensive end is your left tackle, and Two of those sacks were surrendered by Hump, and you would have liked to see, you know, your your franchise tackle 
have a better game in, in that contest. DJ Humphrey's trending down after his performance in week five. And then I've got the rookie class. When I, I put this out every Monday morning, just breaking down the snap counts uh, of each and every one of the Arizona Cardinals rookies that were active on game day, their snap count. And most of the guys were trending down as far as their snap count. The only guys that were, you know, Paris Johnson Jr. stayed the same. And you had B.J. Ojolari went from 5 to 22, which is encouraging. But then you see, and Amari Dermacato went up because out of necessity because James Conner got hurt. But Michael Wilson, 43 snaps. Dante Stills, 42 snaps. And then you had Keetrell Clark at 40 snaps. Just he's playing. He played just under 50% of the snaps, which uh, – you know, I, I thought this was a team that was going to emphasize, and I, I still think they will, but this past week, the rookie class's snap count was declining and trending in the wrong direction. Well, I mean, like, it's not on my list, but Drew Petsing's trending down for his decision not to play Michael Wilson 100% of the snaps. Do you want a, a legitimate passing game or not? Zach Pascal running the wrong route, which we have determined is what happened, and that botched the interception or created the interception with Joshua Dobbs' pass that should have gone to Hollywood Brown, I mean, like, where where was Marco Wilson? And, like, I saw Darren Urban of azcardinals.com. I speculated on Keytrail Clark. Was it disciplinary? How about play your best fucking players? You've gotten to this point with your rookie players. I don't understand what, what the mindset is. I'd love to know more. Um, your right tackle is an ass kicker and one of your best, if not the best offensive lineman. Your best receiver outside of Hollywood Brown is a rookie. And your best corner, in my opinion, is a six-round rookie. I'm not... Like that, yesterday I got Vance Joseph vibes watching the lack of playing time for the rookies. So I'm upset about that. Uh, here's what else I'm upset about with trending down uh, with your boy Johnny V today. It's the health of the team. I mean, again, like through no fault of anybody's, like the the state of this roster right now, you're missing how many of your top 10 players? Well, Kyler Murray's a top 10 player, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, and James Conner. So there's four of your top 10 players on your roster right now missing time potentially because of health. That's not great for a team that was already struggling. So, again, you can't do much about it unless you got guys that are going to step up. So that remains to be seen. Who can be the Josh Dobbs of that group at running back? Who can be the Josh Dobbs of that group at safety? I think we've seen it with Kayvon Wallace, and then you mentioned it. DJ Humphreys right now, like PFF, like their pass, their pass blocking grades, he was their highest rated offensive lineman yesterday. I'm sorry, what? I saw him. <laughs> he got his lunch taken multiple times from Hendricks, and he's a great player. D DJ Humphreys, I mean, like you watched that yesterday, and we're going to talk about the draft here in a little bit. We're going to do a top 10 mock draft for the first time this year. DJ Humphreys is poised to get replaced by a top 10 tackle next year. It's an elite tackle class. And what I saw yesterday is a regression player, a player that nice guy, great locker room, has been a stalwart for the Cardinals. His time's up. His cap hit is way too big. And you're getting work like that. I mean, he just he's not a franchise left tackle anymore. You've got one on the roster. He's playing right tackle right now. So give him his flowers, DJ Humphreys. Send you know, send him goodbye this offseason. Give give him a nice thank you card. I, I'm not paying DJ Humphreys eight figures to look like that yesterday. You want to come back and be paid Kelvin Beecham money? Like I saw some people saying, could Kelvin Beecham be worse? I don't know. But right now, that's not good enough from DJ Humphreys. You're, I saw people banging on Josh Dobbs. He wasn't great. How about set your quarterback up for success with the guys that are being paid pr a premium on this roster right now? Like Josh Dobbs can't play left tackle too and block Trey Hendrickson. So, and then lastly, it's, it's the depth. We talked about it. You're, you're missing Jalen Thompson, Buda Baker at safety. That's a knock. James Conner, that's a knock. Like really like outside of DJ Humphreys, like am I going to bang our Marco Wilson for the second consecutive week? No. Like it's it's hard I for me. I could, but I'm not going to do that. It's hard for me. We can take this down, Damon, for, for, these, for, for me to get on this show and rip people making no money. Let me repeat that. I'm not going to come on this podcast and rip guys who are late round draft picks, practice squad level players, vet minimum guys, yeah. right? And, and they're going to struggle against all pros. Here's why I'm going to rip. Dennis Gardeck before the season, who's making good money, who couldn't come after the quarterback. Well, that's been remedied, okay? DJ Humphreys, who's the second highest cap hit on your team, getting worked the last couple of weeks surrendering sacks. Like, that's who I'm going to reserve my judgment for. Not Josh Dobbs making no money brought on this team late in late August. So people like, see, Josh Dobbs is a bum. I'm sorry. His quarterback rating is still 90 on the year. He's been mostly good. I'm calling out people who are getting paid a premium and not doing their job or have been drafted high a la Isaiah Simmons. That's a mega bust. That, that's what I'm calling out. So, you know, we can, we can transition on some people we're high on. But I, I Keetra Clark struggling. Yeah, he's a six-rounder. 
What do you want him to do? They got, name me their, their, the rest of their defensive backs. Name me their defensive line. Like, come on now, guys. Let's be fair. I love that you just sneak in that Isaiah Simmons is a, is a mega bust. <laughs> yeah, he's a mega bust. He's a mega bust. He was a top 10 mega bust. He's gone. There. Uh, I also like, because it felt forever ago, you went on such a rant there, like that you told Dame, you're like, just get this graphic off. You couldn't even look at these guys any longer. You're so well, disgusted. I just, DJ, DJ Humphreys for me, like, I didn't, Zach Ertz caught a touchdown pass yesterday, so he's not on that list. Yeah. DJ Humphreys goes out and shuts down the pass rush for the LA Rams. Guess what? You're not going to be on that list next week, DJ. But you keep getting worked on the left side, we're going to have problems. Right, and he hasn't been worked on the left side the entire season. He had a bad Sunday. I I, I would say that he he's given up some some pressures lately to Nick Bosa, obviously, and what Michael a, what Parsons, an asshole. obviously. Well, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. let's, I see a lot of people like I love DJ Humphreys. I want him back. The bar should be, you got to be able to. Everybody's got good pass rushers in the NFL. You can't get you can't give up sacks every weekend, DJ. That's all. Okay. Paris Johnson's not giving up sacks every weekend. He's given up one sack this year in six games. That's pretty solid. Had the highest pass blocking grade from our fraudulent friends at PFF yesterday against Cincinnati. It's funny that, that DJ's on this and, and that he had such a high grade because our colleague Howard Baltzer had a conversation with DJ uh, in the locker room last week about pro football focus grades. And he's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. He's like, players look at that. You know, it's, it's crazy. Players look at that. And he's like, I remember I had a game where I was absolute dog shit run blocking. And I looked the next day and I've got the highest run blocking grade on the team. And I, and he, he's like, I can tell you straight up, I was horrible in that game, but I still graded out really well. So it's, that makes me take it, him it, off of my trending down list because of the obvious like <laughs> humility there. That's, that's yeah. good stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah. So how dare you? But, Look, he didn't have the best game. And trending down is not to bury guys, even though Johnny just went on a five-minute rant burying all three of the people on his trending down. But that's why we like to trend up. That's why we like to finish the oh. segment on a high note. Do you want to trend up after you just went scorched yeah, earth? I got some down? people that I'm I'm in love with right now with this Cardinal <laughs> team, despite the 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 one and four record. How about this young man right here leading us off? Uh, Hollywood Brown, or excuse me, Dante Stills. Uh, Seventh round pick out of West Virginia, an afterthought, and he's blowing up the line of scrimmage for Cincinnati. Tackle for loss on top of a sack. I mean, like, he's better than Lecky Foto. I saw more from Dante Stills yesterday than I have from Lecky Foto in three years. And that to me, like, chef's kiss, vote of confidence for Monty Austin for it. You are not allowed as a Cardinal fan now to turn off the TV on mid, mid day three of the NFL draft because anybody in the chat, fair or not, would have said, yeah, that's maybe a practice squad level guy. He's a starting defensive tackle. They found a starting capable defensive tackle, a baby out of the ACC to come here and or Big Twelve or wherever <laughs> the hell West Virginia plays. They're out east. Big Twelve to come here and to and to contribute as a seventh round pick. Like maybe he's a rotational guy. He's going to be on the roster. He's going to vie for snaps next year. That was fantastic. I thought, you know, so happy for that young man to be able to come out and take advantage of an opportunity that has been given to him through hard work. And then some of the injuries, that's where people have to step up. I want to see somebody else step up like Dante Stills did. Di Mercado, listen, look good. I, I, I know we talked about during the first segment, like he got to keep his touchdown ball. Uh, I thought that was fantastic. They did not fall off the train tracks with him as their key back, but it does hamper what they want to do in short yardage. But could he be a Chase Edmonds, like change of pace back, especially if he starts hitting the hole? I think that's a possibility, Bo Brock. So that's encouraging. The biggest flowers that I'm going to get this, this this week is Will Hernandez. Did not practice Friday. We were worried about his availability all weekend. I did not think he was going to play. You met, His back is not in good shape right now. And what is, goes out there and plays a good game. Like <laughs> the right side of the offensive line, the right side of the offensive line was really good. And that's Will Hernandez and Paris Johnson Jr., Will Hernandez has probably been outside of Kazir White the best signing that this team had. And I know a lot of them were modest one to two year deals. He has been fantastic. He is one of the best signings that the Cardinals have had in the last half decade for the amount of money and the amount of shots that he took from the New York Giants and their media. Like, I, I'm so happy Will Hernandez is on this team beyond this year. How many times have we heard Cardinal high priced offensive linemen not play a game? come out late in the week. Oh, I've got an injury bug, not play and leave their team hanging out to dry. Like as much as I was disappointed with, with DJ uh, Humphreys and, and what I saw yesterday, 
This is the opposite for Will Hernandez. Guy gutted it out. was fantastic. Kudos to you, Will Hernandez. You, you've earned my respect tenfold. Not that you need it. One of the first articles I ever wrote for gophnx.com was the signing of Will Hernandez because it was such a desperate, barren offseason of news, but it was one of the first weeks I worked for PHNX Cardinals, and I wrote like a, a half-glass full, you know, optimistic outlook on the signing of Will Hernandez, former second-round draft darling of the Giants. And then any when you and I promoted it on social media, we were just inundated by Giants fans. Big blue idiots just coming at us on the, I mean, on the Twitter streets, just saying how bad Will Hernandez is. And, and now look at, I want to check all those receipts after, you know, nearly two seasons in the desert. He's been one of their most consistent offensive linemen. And what are the Giants? Yeah. Which fucking organization can't teach or, or any offensive lineman to protect anybody? It's the Giants. I mean, it's, it's like, who's the problem here? You guys who continually did they grab. Signing? Who did yeah. they just have a workout with? <laughs> they signed Justin Pugh. Did they sign him? Yeah, he's um he's he projects as a starter on that offensive line. <laughs> Congratulations, the Giants! You played yourself. <laughs> Will Will Hernandez has been one of the best offensive linemen this this franchise has had in the last half decade plus, and a, just a great human being. I think just think he's more comfortable here. He, he his family's from the southwest part of the country. Obviously, he's got Hispanic ties. Like. This is such a cla like classy individual too, like super yeah. nice to the media. And then like he's hurt and he's playing through injury and he's playing well. You can't say anything more about him. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he might be right. Arizona Animal, you read my work. You can maybe the polarization's too deep when I'm when I'm on the keyboard there. Any of my articles, it's like is this guy <laughs> this guy even reading what he's writing? Uh, all right, yeah, great trending up. I love it. Uh, let's take a look at my trending up. As well, uh, let's start with Kayvon Wallace. Unbelievable performance yesterday from Kayvon Wallace. When you look at the final statistics, he was one of three Cardinals in double-digit tackles. You know, Marco Wilson was up there probably because he, the guy he was guarding was catching most of the footballs. Because you're white, of course, the war daddy of the Arizona Cardinals, and then Kayvon Wallace. Ten tackles. He had the TFL, the big stop on fourth down on the goal line. Kayvon Wallace credited with the TFL there. Then he had a pass defendant, and he had the pick that put the Cardinals in a position to go down and potentially take the lead, and they couldn't because of the fourth and one turnover on downs. But Kayvon Wallace had a game yesterday when a lot of the players on the defense did not. Kayvon Wallace, as we continue to give him his flowers, we're doing that in the trending up segment. We look at the offensive line, who struggled and who didn't. Yell the throat hold, I think, was probably your highest-rated offensive lineman as far as how he performed, he only gave up one pressure when you saw a ton of pressure from that defensive front of the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, he was a guy that also showed up on the injury report early last week, gutted it out, was ready to go, continues to help this this offensive line move people around, keep people off the quarterback, but also create running lanes for their running backs. I love what I've seen from Yelda Froholt and then continue for a second straight week. Hollywood Brown, he was a huge part of the game plan, even to a fault with the Joshua Dobbs pick six that ball intended for hollywood brown probably was going to get some yardage there but you know had the big touchdown catch beautiful throw from joshua dobbs but a really good route by by hollywood brown who was huge on that entire drive where he was making plays uh helping to move the chains and get into the money area for the cardinals offense i like what i've seen from hollywood brown i want everybody right now if you're pro re-signing hollywood brown to a contract like this video right now uh I'm going to like it because I'm pro resigning Hollywood Brown because I, again, like how many quarterbacks he played with since he's got here, he's been a big, big time producer. Like he's going to end up this year with about 1200 yards, maybe like six, seven, eight touchdowns. Like that doesn't just show up on a team every year. Like we hope Michael Wilson can get to that point, but like we've talked about it. Like where would this team be without Hollywood Brown? He's not pouting because the old regime's gone or Kyler Murray's not playing. He's just producing. How about that catch and run yesterday, making people miss in the open field, getting yourself a first down? I mean, this 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 young man has has come into this season on a mission, playing through injury. We know his ankle's a little nipped up, helping them convert pivotal third down. So, I again, there, there is a lot, even with the losses, there is a lot to like with this team. And you're going to find out in these dog days of the season where this team's taking their lumps before K-1 comes back, who really wants to play and be here. And you're going to be able to measure people's character. And the character I'm loving right now is from the young players, Will Hernandez, Hollywood Brown. You absolutely love to see that. You love to see this. We're going to talk mock draft, our first mock draft 
of the fall football season, top 10, because Cardinals two picks right now are in the top 10. We're having so much fun. It should be illegal. Speaking of illegal, how about illegal Pete's right now? I take my wife out to eat here in a little bit, and we might stop by illegal Pete's, have some patio beer, beers as a little, I don't know, appetizer. Fantastic, right? They have the best, absolutely the best nachos in town. Illegal Pete's, tacos, salads, burritos, bowls, whatever you want. Irresistible. How about their margs? Un unbelievable. Got traditional strawberry, got a ton of different flavors. This show is brought to you by our friends at Legal Pete's because they are flipping fantastic, as is their piping hot case. So the temperature needs to drop so I can have it on the reg. You should too. And how about this? Perfect timing. Show's over 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Happy hour at all 12 locations. Again, not this podunk 30 minute happy hour, a real happy hour. Five hours, baby. That's how you do it with Illegal Pete's. They've been my go-to spot every day for the happy hours that I crave. For 28 years, Legal Pete's has been serving up burrito goodness here in the Valley. Do not doubt them because they are elite. You go on Illegal Pete's, yeah, you get those margs. You uh, take advantage of the happy hour, but also really rock-solid happy hour at your house with some wink and some countdown. Seltzers, all the rage. Of course, we've got a new product coming to town. It's the seltzer without the booze, but with the... THC and just a wink of it. That's what Wink's all about. They've got uh, that perfect THC to CBD balance, that golden ratio everyone's looking for. Delicious tasting seltzer, balanced, light, social, bubbly enough to kind of make you work the room, but also bubbly enough to keep your wits about you. You're not going to be out there blabbering and making an ass of yourself with Wink. You're going to be able to be under control and also get ready for liftoff with their sister product. How about Countdown? Countdown is that nano emulsion of cannabis-infused beverage that delivers that sky-high blast of powerful flavor. Check out Countdown and Wink. You can find out where to purchase them at drinkwink.com, D-R-N-K-W-Y-N-K.com. You can find them at Sunday Good Dispensaries in the Valley if you're down in Tucson, Botanical Dispensary in Tucson. All right, here we go. Cardinals, two picks in the top 10. We figure... Why not take the ribbon off? It's a star-studded class in college football ahead of the 2024 NFL Draft. People have been asking for it. Here it is, the debut top 10 mock draft for this program here. PH and X Cardinals, Bo and I put our heads together, and this is what we came up with. Now, you see at the top of this list, got a couple teams that own two firsts in the top 10. What I will say, Bo Brock, as we break it down for our audio-only listeners, Caleb Williams going first overall to the Chicago Bears with Carolina's pick. They are the only 0-5 team in the NFL. The Bears have the second pick. They take Marvin Harrison Jr. However, I do believe if they face a scenario in which a team right below them would like a quarterback, I think they have an opportunity, or the Cardinals, should they find themselves in this position, Bo, to move down one pick. You don't want to move down more than one. To move down one pick to secure Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick three and Drake May at pick two. Dane Brugler, who is an NFL draft savant, mm -hmm. said that he is convinced the draft order will be 1-2 Caleb and Drake May, which means Marvin Harrison Jr., he's going to go at pick three. Man, uh, I mean, let's hope so, right? I mean, with all the, the Cardinals, uh, what they're doing this season and, and they're ruining their draft picks by you know winning a football game and the Texans, they're really not doing what – the part we expected them to do is the Cardinals, that ninth overall pick. That's the Texans pick. But yeah, you'd love to see yourself stay within striking distance of Marvin Harrison Jr. Because we talk about, and people throw generational around far too often, but you know, Marvin Harrison, all the success that Ohio State has had in producing top tier wide receivers and Chris Olive and Garrett Wilson, you got a guy, Marvin Harrison Jr., that they've deemed as can't miss generational type talent. You saw what his dad was able to do with Peyton Manning so many years in Indianapolis, and that he's a, even a bigger prospect than his dad because he's got the size, physicality that you want. I mean, that's that he he is to me, especially with when you have a guy like Kyler Murray on your roster still. Um, it's he's the the gem of this draft. Like I would much rather evaluate him and have an eyes set towards the future with. Marvin Harrison than even so with a Caleb Williams or one of the quarterbacks. He's the best overall player. Um, and if the Cardinals end up with the second or the third pick, they're going to take, um, I, I believe Marvin Harrison jr. Uh, if they end up with the first pick, we've talked about it, Caleb Williams, but I, again, the Arizona Cardinals, if we can see that one more time, Damon 
for our audio only listeners, the Cardinals currently pick sixth and ninth right now in the 2024 NFL draft. The ninth pick, of course, coming from Houston, who did lose yesterday to Atlanta. But we have the Arizona Cardinals at pick six taking Joe Alt from the University of Notre Dame, who I think is the best pure tackle in the NFL. So you'd be pairing Joe Alt, a blue chipper, with Paris Johnson Jr., a blue chipper. You'd be set at both tackle spots conceivably for the next half decade plus, hopefully the next decade. And then number nine, they get the best pure defensive tackle who dominated in a loss to Nebraska last week. Mm -hmm. Our boy Newton out of University of Illinois, out of Champaign, disruptive. This tackle defensive tackle class, I think, has a lot of depth, but he is clearly the, the crown jewel right now. Not a Jalen Carter type of prospect, but just in that tier below. I think the Cardinals, again, are going to consider a bunch of defenders. Verse out of uh, Florida State, if he were to drop, drop Kool-Aid out of Alabama is obviously a name to watch, the cornerback. But it feels mm -hmm. like, should the Cardinals go tackle with their first pick, feels like you're almost has it a mandate that you got to go defender with that second top 10 pick. I mean, I love him going trenches here on both sides of the football. I do. Yeah. Like, I, I can get, I, I can have, I can daydream about that for sure. Like, just as much as you can with the, with a big playmaking wide receiver or a big playmaking quarterback. Like, we just seeing what Jonathan Gannon and his coaching staff have done with spare parts. If you, if you get two blue chippers in there in the trenches and you add Joe Alt, you know, either to the to the right tackle spot and swap, you know, Paris Johnson Jr. to left tackle or vice versa, and then you put a guy like Jerzon Newton from Illinois right there in the middle of that defense and put him in the rotation, and you've got him with Dante Stills, and you can make continue to supplement that maybe through free agency, then you're starting to really make up uh, and, and put some talent on that defense. But I have absolutely zero problem. Maybe it's because – I'm a product of, of, of the previous regime, watching them waste picks and picks and picks. And for them to do this and kind of continue to eat their vegetables with two of their top picks, I'm all for it. Just feels like this, this regime isn't messing around. No. Philadelphia wins games with line of scrimmage play. Tennessee is winning games despite a talent level with line of scrimmage play. And for, for me, it's just like lean into this draft. What do we know about this draft? Great quarterback draft, a superstar generational wide receiver, and then a ton of line of scrimmage depth. And so if the Cardinals are in a position where they don't have a premium pick inside the top three, lean into the draft, right? Don't force a pick a la Steve Keim on a need or try to fit a tweener player into a position they don't fit into. Like we know Joe Alt plays left tackle, franchise left tackle opposite Paris Johnson Jr., if verse is available, edge rusher immediately comes in and helps produce pressure off the edge the Cardinals aren't getting at the moment. So Newton, you know, enough said. Cardinals do, are in no position to pass on a generational defensive tackle. So it's, it's an exciting time. If you want to look ahead, now wins by both Houston and Arizona this weekend will change this. But we want to stay current. And the current draft order right now has the Arizona Cardinals bow with two top 10 picks. I love it. Joe Alt, 20 years old. He's young. He's 20 years old. He's six foot eight. Just a massive human being. And if you couple him with another massive human being, you book in your, your offensive line. Doesn't matter that you're paying your quarterback close to $50 million a year. You you've got two controllable premium positions taken care of in left tackle and right tackle. And then you start to work on the trenches on the other side of the football, and Jonathan Gannon starts to get really impressive play from that defensive front rotation. I mean, it's Monty Austin for him. They are working in concert and sweet, sweet music. Can we see that order one more time, Damon? I want to just <laughs> point this out. I know Damon's getting sick of pulling this up. I want everybody. Producer Leah, like by the way, Damon, Damon has, has gone on. Damon, and I can only allow you to call producer Leah. Leah Merrill, producer Damon, so many Leah, times. Leah is the OG producer of the show. Has I literally am. Job. Yeah, D Damon had to run to produce the D-backs pregame show, so I uh, I took over. Leah's moved on to bigger and better things. She hosts a big-time podcast called PHNX Coyotes that does a fantastic job, but I'm going to make her put this graphic up one more time. <laughs> I, want, I want everybody to look at not necessarily the names of the players. Look at the teams in this top 10 right now. If the Cardinals opt to, to continue on the path with Kyler Murray, Raiders need a quarterback. Giants need a quarterback. Patriots need a quarterback. Vikings probably need a quarterback. Denver needs a quarterback. Chicago needs a quarterback. Probably. Yeah. I mean, the, the Cardinals, if they say Kyler Murray's our guy in the January press conference, there's going to be immense talent 
push down to this franchise yet again. They will be the benefactor of that. Don't think Austin Ford isn't thinking that way. We would love a Bo Nix being overdrafted, Michael Penix being overdrafted, Shadur Sanders opting to come out. That's good, Leah. I mean, it, to me, it, they're in a position right now to say, all, all you can eat prospect buffet, push players down <laughs> for this franchise to go nuts on because all those other teams, coincidentally, do not have good quarterback play. Oh, man. I Like, to have to put kind of our prospect talk on hold for that time where we were encouraged by the the Cardinals, like how they competed week in and week out. And, and that they could still happen again. I know it could, but this is too damn fun. I mean, to have two premium picks in this draft class just gets you excited, gets you giddy when you look at all those players. And, and you're right. I mean, there are going to be so many quarterback hungry teams. And I think people are are now realizing like, the fool's gold out there on free agency and, and trading premium picks to get quarterbacks off one roster onto your roster. Like it hasn't necessarily worked out for those teams. I mean, we could see kind of a hold on that. And, and with this class teams jockey up the, up the draft board in order to try to get their future quarterbacks. Get to some of these super chats. Haven't forgot about you guys. You guys have been mm -hmm. patient. Alex in the chat, dollar 99 praying for the day. We stop saying, what if, I mean, I, I'm praying for the day for those for those what if victories to, to come too, and to, to start saying we're gonna we're gonna start winning games at home and on the road again. But I, I also think you got to add some talent, man, and that's mm -hmm. what this draft talk is all about. This is a generational draft class. Yeah, you and, got two uh, picks in the first round, you've got one in the second round, and then you've got what three in the third round potentially, don't you? So you've got six in the in the top three rounds. And and what what have we seen so far? Of course, you want to see more from B.J. Ojolari, but Paris Johnson Jr. Dog, he's he hasn't seemed overmatched really at any point during his rookie season at sixth overall. And then you've got Can we call it a hit. Are we allowed to do that? For five uh, yeah, games? let's do it. It's it's at least uh, it's at least in the alleyway for for extra bases for a double or triple. And then you've got yourself, uh, you know, as far as we'll see what Garrett Williams brings in the table once he gets on the field. But Michael Wilson. Uh, parlaying this into the question from the new regime, any yeah. clarification on Michael Wilson and why he wasn't involved in the passing game and how many more drops from Ertz before he's traded. Um, look, let me finish my thought as far as, you know, Monty Austin Fort has shown the ability to find talent all as, as deep as the third round finding starters there, but also on, as Johnny said, you, you can't turn off day three of the NFL draft any longer with Monty Austin Fort, but to load him up, with six picks in the first three rounds. I mean, there's going to be an infusion of talent this offseason that we didn't get to see this past offseason outside of the draft. So it's exciting. But as far as the lack of Michael Wilson, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it just comes down to, to game flow as far as what Joshua Dobbs was seeing or wasn't seeing. There wasn't a whole lot, a lot of opportunity. I, I know that they were using him in, in, as a blocker in the run game. He was out there 75% of the snaps, but didn't see his first target until the fourth quarter. And, you know, I, I don't know if and it's not Drew Petzing's fault that uh, that Michael Wilson wasn't utilized yesterday. I think it's it's more of a, a Dobbs issue and, and maybe a credit to the Bengals and, and how they defended him after a big week the, against the Niners. Illa Dre, 499, with the way Austin Ford draft, I feel good about next draft. How can you not? I yeah. mean, like, we talked about it this past spring. Like, you just light those picks on fire if you're Steve Kime. Like, that's ex essentially what they would do is we would talk up prospects that we liked and subsequently – very few times were, would Kime select the players that I think majority of the fan base wanted. Fan base wanted CeeDee Lamb and D, and you know Creed Humphreys. And I'm not saying that the fan base is always right, but man, you just you had a tough time selling some of these picks over what it seemed. I mean, the the antithesis of it or the culmination of it was really, you know, Andy Isabella over DK Metcalf. I mean, most fans were like, what are we doing? And it just, I mean, at the end of the day. It's it's bit them in the ass, and Austin Ford has been able to clean it up in one off season, and this roster is going to look very different. So even on Sundays where it's tough to watch this team with the lack of depth and star power, know that it's it's only temporary. But I'm going to tell you something that's not temporary right now. It's the new home, Arizona Sports Family, the family sports broadcaster, your new TV home for the Phoenix Suns. You guys liked the pregame yesterday? It was fantastic. Arizona Family Sports did a fantastic job. We were watching it in studio in lieu in connection with the Cardinals game right now with Arizona's family sports, watch 70 plus games right now from your living room, find the games on Arizona's family, three TV and Arizona family sports. Mark McLaren. Fantastic. They've got a great crew over there. 
All you need is antenna, many other options available, local retailers online. There are indoor, outdoor varieties, one for every price point. But with an antenna, AKA over the air, all you got to do, flip on channel three. It's a throwback or 3.5 or channel 44 here in the Phoenix area. Watch every Phoenix Sun game. I mean, how can you beat that, right? I'm drowning right now in subscription services for streamers. But again, if you've got an antenna, flip on channel three or better yet, if you've got Cox Cable, turn on channel 13. Support Arizona's family sport. I, I tell you, I had so much fun watching the Suns pregame yesterday, Bo, and the postgame. Arizona's family sports, it's great. You see the people that work so hard with their weekly broadcasts or nightly broadcasts to see them now getting a chance to interact and pub up the, the Phoenix Suns. It just it feels much more personal. And it's an extension, really, I believe, of what we do here at PH Next Sports. So support them wherever you live in Arizona. Visit azfamily.com or click Suns Games for listing information for your area. It's a great resource to help you find your Phoenix Suns games on Arizona Family Sports. And like something we've always believed, Bo, is like media lifts up media, right? We want this to be a premier sports town, and we do that in conjunction with places like Arizona Family. They do a great job. Um, again, Mark McLaren, who is their top sports guy, I believe is their sports director. We've been on his podcast. He's been on mm -hmm. this show. Uh, they do it first class over there. Check them out. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, Julia, Nick, they all do a first class job. They were all in different places yesterday. I think Julia was in LA for the division series and Mark and Mark McClune was in Detroit. And then Nick was at the uh Cardinals game yesterday. Uh and AZ family, what they're doing as far as their sports product, it's it's fun. And we're glad to be partnered up with them. We're also glad to be partnered up with our friends over at FOCO. I mean, as you get excited about the Suns, why not go to FOCO right now? How about you get yourself some Suns overalls, some bib overalls? That sounds pretty good, right? Or some Suns slippers or maybe some uh, slides, whatever you're looking for to kind of bolster your, your fandom. You can do it at FOCO.com. And we've got a deal for you where you can cash in uh, using the promo code PHNX. If you go to FOCO.com, use the promo code PHNX, and you'll get all non-presale items. Items, uh, you'll get 10% off of those at foco.com from apparel to accessories to toys, collectibles, novelty items. You can find them for your team, Cardinals, Suns, Coyotes, D-backs. You can find them foco.com. Use that promo code PHNX for 10% off all non-sale items at foco.com. Mike, $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Mike. I like what Mike's speaking here. Did you see the article about trading pit for pits? Second round pick and Ertz, we get pits and a fourth. Thoughts? I don't hate that. I actually like that a lot. Like Pass. you're going to see the man to my right talk up Brock Bowers over the course of this regular season into the off season. I I think Kyle Pitts is Pass. A Pass. Stop. How dare you? You want to trade uh, assets for Kyle Pitts, but you want to uh, take Brock Bowers yeah, just a former pick? top 10 pick. That's called buying low on an asset. Uh, I, oh, I'm yeah? all about that. What is he an asset? Like how is he an asset? What has he done He's a big in the last two seasons? Get a tight end. They prefer big physical play. Johnny, what is Brock Bowers? Game. Am I using a top 10 pick on Kyle Does Pitts? Does Brock no. Powers have an ACL tear on his resume too? Not Kyle Pitts is in 20 You want ACL damage in good NFL? with Kyle Pitts. I, I can't, can't believe wait. that you're advocating for Kyle Pitts and you're anti Brock Bowers. It's the price you pay, Bo Brock. I'm not spending a top 10 pick on, on Brock Bowers. Name? I need a barf bag. That's a great <laughs> We're going to argue that more this week on our draft show. Check it out. More to come. But great question, Mike. I say yes. I say yes to this too. Everybody right now, go to gophnx.com. Howard Balls are cranking out the content like nobody else. The PHNX Cardinals beat reporter. In the meantime, become a diehard. Our diehard t-shirts are fantastic. You get one for free every single year you sign up. Or you can cop that free black hat that my Brock Bowers, Levin co-host is, <laughs> is repping right now. Again, the vibes are Bo Brock Bowers. Bo Brock Bowers. <laughs> Listen, I already had to talk myself into Drake May looking good this weekend. I will not cross the picket line on Brock Bowers. <laughs> but again, become a diehard. You won't be sorry that you did. Uh, you guys are crushing it. Super Chat's coming in. Von Tell, $1.99. Turner and low to go before verse. Potential targets. Listen, I think a lot can be interchangeable this, this time of year. Verse is the hot name right now at, at Edge. Low two looks good, though. I, I'm a little bit concerned about UCLA's defense as a whole under Chip Kelly, but Florida State, they got a real defense. So I, I, you can talk me into a lot of people as long as they're not Tyree Wilson, Bo Brock. You can't talk me into trading for Kyle Pitts. Never, ever. Even if there's a fire, I will not be trading for Kyle Pitts. No way. I mean, how many years does he have left on his contract? You got to pick up his fifth-year option? You got to pay him like he's a he's going to be a top-paid tight end? Listen, You're insane. Anyway. You're an insane person for even entertaining that. 
when they've got six picks in the top three rounds and you want to spend draft capital and then future guaranteed dollars on a guy that's done jack shit the last two seasons. Uh, he's Pitt. got he's got baby arm Desmond Ritter not throwing him the football. Look what he did. Sam Laporta week. in his first year has as many touchdowns as Kyle Pitts has in his career. He's, got Jared Goff. he's prioritized in the offense. Poor Kyle Pitts. He's in no man's land. Kyle, Kyle Pitts is, you know, who wanted Kyle Pitts was Steve Kime. Steve Kime wanted Kyle Pitts. Not a shocker. Not a shocker. And now, add him to the list, Johnny Venerable. No, great, great I article like, up there. I no, like, you can't yeah, stand like else. You can't defend yourself. Uh, great article from Howard Bolzer about Kwame Laster. Kwame Laster Jr., uh, he had the catch at the end of the game last uh, yesterday. People were probably wondering what it, the Bengals were throwing the ball in that position. You see Kwame Laster. He got the nod to be on the active roster yesterday uh his his dad played a lot of big downs for the arizona cardinals phoenix cardinals back in the day passed away too young uh for him to come where his dad started safety for this organization and and get to get you know a a catch at at state farm stadium it was a great story read more about it go phnx.com from howard balzer you guys have been fantastic today uh we're running late because of all of you because you guys are keeping the vibes immaculate per (laughs) usual you know what else keeps the vibes immaculate here uh, how about Baldy? Brian Baldinger joining the program Ooh. tomorrow. Minana, top of the program. Baldy's breakdowns. He's going to give you his very additional insights. The latest from the Cardinals' loss to Cincinnati. And, you know, what he thinks of uh, what the Cardinals might need to do a quarterback or offensive line to shore up this problem. But in the meantime, like and subscribe. Leave us a five star wherever you get your podcast. He's Bull Brock. I'm Johnny Venerable. Everybody be well. We'll see you on a Tuesday. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.